Wonderful. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. Hi, Elena. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, <laughs> I'm really uh, just honored to be here with you. I was reading your bio and really inspired by all of the wonderful things that you've accomplished. Oh, man. Well, well, well thanks. Likewise. It's a, <laughs> it's a fun, fun time to be alive. Yes. Awesome. So since you describe yourself as a serial entrepreneur, I wanted to find out what is it about entrepreneurship that you love so much? Well, uh, I don't think it's how long that word is. Um, that's most people don't begin this uh, thinking, well, I want to be, you know, a 17th century French word that means to undertake. Uh, they, they begin thinking like, man, I want to do something. I want to create. I, uh, for me personally, it was, it was actually, I never even thought I'd start a business. I wanted, I'd always watched movies and there's always in movies, it seems to be this theme of this happy band of friends or misfits or rebels who go on this great adventure together. And I really wanted that. So I started coming up with things that would give me an excuse to do great things with good people. And that naturally led me to starting businesses. So I didn't, I didn't mean to, um, it just kind of happened because I was after a certain type of life and a certain type of world. Wow. I love it. Um, so my first entrepreneurial endeavor was when I was seven years old. <laughs> I read that. That's fascinating. Yeah. So how old were you when you started your first business? <laughs> so, okay. My brother will tell a story where my mom would give us uh, money to go to the ice cream truck in, in our neighborhood. And she would uh, give us a dollar bill and what we wanted only cost um, like 25 cents, but other kids would run out to ice cream truck too. And I would see them and I would use the rest of the money to buy them something, which I would say set me up for a wonderful career in nonprofits. Yeah. Um, uh, giving, <laughs> giving away money, but, uh, which is good because that was my first company. So my first formal company began actually when I was just a student. Uh, when I was a freshman, it started as a student club and it didn't become a, a, a 1020, you know, filled out my 1023 501c3 nonprofit until I was probably a junior or senior in college. But I'm just like when you were seven, it, it's, it's not about what piece of paper said it was this type of business. It's yeah. what, what was the relationship? What was the transfer of value between people? And you're right. That's, that's something that was in your DNA from an early, early age. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I can see that it was in yours too. And, and so what has been the common thread throughout all of the endeavors on, up, up until now? I, I would say that the common thread when it's successful and when at the Singleton Foundation, how we're looking at how do we encourage people to be entrepreneurial, it comes back to that relationship. It become, comes back to that exchange. A really good business and a really good economy, um, we can use words like free market, but it's not capturing like this works well when we find ways to provide value to each other. So when I look at the common thread of when things worked, it's, man, it's when people were coming together, having conversations, sharing ideas, discovering needs. And then out of that sense of shared value and shared vision of, you know, what we could become and what life could be like, it became easy to find the specific answers and tactics, like in what we would say, start a business or create a product. So for me, that common thread, that I was interested in then, um, and I would say that we're still interested now at the foundation as we look out across the ecosystem is how do we, how do we give permission? Um, how do we, as you beginning as a storyteller, how do we recreate that narrative to help people see that, that ownership, that possibility, um, that potential to begin to look at the world as these shared relational um, opportunities to provide value to one another because out of that phenomenal things are going to happen. Yeah, I love that. So with the foundation, like what, and, and speaking about stories, what has been your favorite story? <laughs> and my why? favorite story? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, like, okay, so favorite story out of what the foundation's doing or just favorite story, period? No, out of what the foundation's doing. <laughs> foundation story. Yeah. Um, man. Oh, okay, so. So if I had to pick just just a story, oh gosh, that'd be hard. Yeah. You know what? I, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it this way. I love um, the story of of Marshmallow, the DJ. You know, oh, yeah. the old head. 
so he, we worked with him and uh, helped to make a music video he had called Power. I think it was very aptly named and this, this wonderful song, it's very upbeat and catchy. But in this music video, it told the story of him, like of, of his whole hustle, the, how he had a dream, saw like, you know, in the, in the music video, he's like seeing the commercial to like buy a new DJ mixer panel. And he sees that and he doesn't have any money. And so it's, it's this wonderful, you know, mix of vision um, excitement, hustle, intentionality, planning, because he has to, he goes and he gets a job in the music industry. And yes, he's making connections and learning the whole time, but he's also like saving each paycheck because he believes in something enough. He is creating the value um, that he wants to become. And there at the end of the video, like you see him, he buys a mixer, mixer panel and you no know, yeah. DJ lights start flashing in his living room and he, he becomes that thing. So I, I think it's funny to say my favorite story is, is Marshmallow, but I love that story because I think so many people uh, resonate with that and it's so simple. And it was, you know, it's something where I think 42 million people watch that video. I mean, yes, the music is great, but I think the music is great because we're seeing the, the work and the hustle and the intention put in by somebody so that he could not only do something he loved for himself, but to give it away to so many others. Um, and to provide that value and to learn like what what do people really want and how does this really work so if i was to pick one story from our foundation that's it's a big winner for me oh i love it so much because i'm a firm believer in vision and and in putting in the intentional effort to see something through now uh, something that i saw in your bio that really resonated with me was the uh, the, the power of purpose so what do you think your purpose is and how does that play into what you do and into the foundation as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, for me, that same drive of how, how, do, we, how do I build a life of doing great things with good people? Um, that's personally where I'm most satisfied, but I've also found that's, that's what everybody else wants too. Yeah. We all want to belong. I mean, in behavioral physics, if you go into like positive organizational psychology, the most powerful driver of creative cognitive behavior and participation is belonging. Yeah. It's like we can talk about having a why, but if I change where you belong, I, I change what you believe. Yes. And uh, so for me and personally, that's been the big thing is how do we, how do I not only have that and what I'm doing, but how are we cultivating that? So Know, thousands of other people could have that same experience because again if we did that the, the, the creative output what people will do with that is going to exceed vastly exponentially um, the sum of its parts um, and so that's what's really exciting about our work at the foundation particularly uh, with storytelling um, and with that's why we make content about financial literacy and entrepreneurship that is engaging inspiring etc is to again we're trying to spark that that accessibility that permission that spirit of of fun and togetherness. Uh, so that that's the purpose that drives me. And I am so fortunate to be at a place where we get to live that purpose out and extend it to others. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So as you mentioned, I love storytelling. <laughs> it's something that, you know, it's just part of me and I believe in its power and to just influence, impact and, ch and create change. Mm -hmm. So, um, why do you love stories and what what do you think stories can do <laughs> oh wow what what a question that's huge um what what can they not do come on um and, and you know this like you i love how even in your bio you write your life as a story yeah um be, not just because of like it's a good flow and, it, and it's catchy it's easy to read but because we know that that communicates so much more than the words in the page we, we understand the arcs, uh, uh, you know, if we're looking at a hero's journey, I love how we all get the once upon a time there was, but then and you have the inciting incident and the trough and, and we all feel it viscerally. And then we also know what it's like to, to grab a hand, to have the introduction of that guide of, you know, of the Dumbledore uh, yeah. figure or Yoda who like, you know, is like, oh, hey, here, I'm going to give you the knowledge, the inspiration, the tools and the belief in yourself that you can rise and you can become something different. And that's what I love about that is like, even when, when you told your story about yourself, your audience is able to not just see you as the hero of a story, but to see themselves that way. Yes. And so it's not just, again, the conveying of information, it's the sharing of identity. 
um, of what, what is and also what could be. I, come on, that's just, that's the biggest <laughs> question. Like it's, uh, yeah, but yeah. So like, and, and you're, you're living proof of that and so many other people oh. are, and it's, yeah, stories give us a great way to share that. Yeah. Well, you said it perfectly and I, I love, I love it. I'm going to enjoy sharing that with my audience a lot. <laughs> and uh, um, so what are the values that, that drive you? So I, you know, it's something that, that I know that there are a lot of them, but what, what is something that every day you strive to, to be or to do? I'm very f firm believer in making mm. to be lists versus mm. to do lists. So who do you want to be every day? Wow. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Um, I, I was actually just working on this, um, with my mentor yesterday. Um, and we, we did this exercise where, you know, we, we got centered. we were, took a few deep breaths, closed our eyes and relaxed and thought back for all the times of not just like, when, when did you think you were the most successful or the highest on your horse, but when were you the most you, mm. um, and yeah. feel the most connected and feel and filled and in flow. And like, it didn't have to necessarily be like that, that thing worked out, but when, what, what, what were those times? Um, and for me, almost all those times came back to when I was, again, I was with this group of small group of awesome people who are all excitedly sharing ideas, deep in conversation and yeah. creating something together, dreaming up what might be. So that, that community piece, is really, really uh, strong for me. So, I mean, yes, commu community is up there. And then the act of creation, that creativity part, yeah. hand in hand with that. Uh, I think this is really key. You know, community isn't just that we all live around each other. I go to Whole Foods yeah, um, and that doesn't necessarily mean I have community with everybody in, in the yeah. intimate sense. Uh, but creativity is really great because when, when we build, you know, people don't fight what they help build. And for a lot of entrepreneurs, what is so critical is that, you know, it's not just your idea and you need to get this idea out to other people. And it's not just customer discovery in a rote sense of who will buy this and for how much it is people, if they're on board with it, you'll be building it with them and they'll be your champions. Yeah. Um, and if they help you, people want to help you and you ask them to help you and you bring them into the process, it not only gives you a greater end product, um, but you know, the, the, the emotions behind it, even the fulfillment, um, that, that can, uh, the shared creation that happens, that magic of like this idea plus that idea equaled, not the two ideas, but equaled this yeah. third thing, um, that synthesis, like that's, that's so, so key. So I would, I would definitely say that for me with what I'm doing and with what we're trying to purport, uh, it's, it's community. Um, it's, it's creativity, which has that participatory mm -hmm. let's, you know, let's take ownership and whether it's, you know, money or entrepreneurship, both of those come back, back to what do we believe about our power in the world and yeah. what we're going to make of it together. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick with those two. I now. love that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that segues into the, the other thing that I wanted to ask you, because I really loved when you said in your bio that that you believe that everyone is creative mm. and something that you know i believe that firmly and something that you know my audience is uh mainly moms and sometimes i or most of the time i'm encouraging them to find their strengths and to see the ways that they use their gifts creatively so what is something that you would advise to those moms or those mentors or those you know, uncles, it, it doesn't matter, but someone that, that has a child in their lives, how they, how can they nurture the, their mm. creativity? Man, not to harp on a single theme, but don't, don't do it alone. You, you can't do this alone. I mean, you're right. Create, creativity is something you cultivate. And uh, that process of cultivating creativity will, will come with others. Uh, there's an author I read once who said creativity um, is only becomes real when it's shared. And mm -hmm. I love that idea because he's saying like, Hey, if you make a piece of art and you hang it in your house, it's a, it's you, you made something, but that shared sense of creativity never really happened. 
I'm like, just like with the business, if you come up with a really, really cool product and you put it in your garage, it's never a business. It's just, you made something cool and it's in your garage. Um, yeah. You have a, you have a nice paperweight maybe. Um, oh, but I would give me chuckle <laughs> because my, my daughter does makes all these paintings and she's like, mom, you can't keep all of my paintings. <laughs> <laughs> you need to show them to the world. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. I'll let her know. Please oh, well, go really? <laughs> what what will your daughter what will change about how she believes in herself and believes about the world and what other people believe about her if she even is just like hey i want to share these paintings with a few friends i'm going to even yeah. mail some out to some people to put on you know our your refrigerator's full so you can start mailing out to other people who might need some refrigerator art yeah. and that, yeah. that's the whole business right there and <laughs> uh, but i like it i like it very yeah. much so yeah. i Please i go love on. it I, I had to interject because it's like, oh, you're schooling me here. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, yeah, don't do it alone. Get in community. If when you take ideas in community, that is the most powerful driver in the world. Um, you know, man, this world is, to, to, again, it's the quote, multiple people said it throughout history, but this world has only ever been changed by small groups of people in committed relationship. And, you know, even, um, you know, P Picasso, and Dolly, like they had to find community with, with each other to find those other people who could begin to share what, what they were seeing and to help each other. Um, they would spend hours just looking at paintings together, not even talking, but for them it was, they were, they were sharing, they were growing. Um, and it's like, so we can speak about it in the art world, but also like look at Bangladesh with the, with the Grameen Bank for, for all of their ups and downs, they responded to incredible tragedy. And, and again, because we're talking about art, one of my favorite philosophies on art is that it's it's a uh, dissonance. You know, painting is light versus dark. Music is is dissonance and revolution. Sculpture is space and form. But we find beauty um, where there's contrast. And yeah. so you were able to find incredible value, uh, regardless of the the challenges you met in life. And you talk about that with, with pain. When you say pain, that's what you mean. Um, just like with entrepreneurs, it's because we're in community and we see an opportunity to provide value. Well, that, that's very often we're responding to something broken. And yeah. so in Bangladesh, what I loved uh, was after they'd gone through a slew of natural disasters, um, as the, the company, was, you know, the country was trying to get, get back on its feet, this movement began of this inverted financial model where uh, groups of you know mostly women would get together in these villages because they were the ones not participating yet in that style of economic growth. Um, and this bank was created that would give out a, you know, a microloan to each woman, but it wasn't just to each woman as an individual. They did it in community and they came up with ideas together as a community and they all helped these businesses work and grow that often worked hand in hand to multilaterally solve the, the problems, the things they needed in their, their own city and town and village. Um, and that you know, not only helped them repay the loan, that's what helped make them successful. That's what helped rewrite the fabric of, of the culture, the society of what was possible. And so you gave birth to all these other acts of, um, of creation. And yeah. so, yeah, that, that's what happens when we share this. Uh, that's what's possible. It's not just you know, an artifact, it is, you know, this is giving step to what else can be done to a new world. Oh, that is so profound. And I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, I also want, you know, you touched on the pain part. And when we talk about entrepreneurship, when we talk mm -hmm. about seeing a dream and, and making it happen, or I, as I like to say, making it welcome, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, this idea that it's hard and that there are so many obstacles and that it's painful. What can you say about that? Is that true? And if it's true, what do we learn from that? <laughs> I, the, the, the old phrase, entrepreneur, uh, an entrepreneur is somebody who works 80 hours a week so they don't work 40. <laughs> yeah. um, I, it, for me, it's really, we're, we're talking about questions of life. And when the foundation, why we tell these stories, why we make, you know, we invest so much in finding stories and telling them in a really fun, accessible way around whether it's, whether it's like savings and finance or starting a business or having the hustle is yes, yes, this is hard, but we, we want to create a different picture of something being challenging. It doesn't make it not worth doing. Um, 
it could also be very hard to work for somebody else your entire life and never have done that thing you really wanted to do and never solve the need that so many other people uh, desperately needed you to solve. They needed your creative input. Um, so we, we want to allow people to see like it, you can work 40 hours a week in a company and still have that entrepreneurial spirit and that spirit of participation and creativity and community. And that's fantastic. Um, we know not everyone is going to build a business and start a, you know, or start a product, build a business, flip those, strike that, reverse it. Uh, but that spirit of participation, creation, belonging, um, that, that needs to be consistent to have a healthy society, yes. um, to have a healthy free market. Um, and so, yes, this can be hard. It almost definitely will be, but so will anything else. And I, I, I not hate, I, I struggle with the quote by Henry David Thoreau, of course, you know, the vast majority of people lead lives of quiet yes. desperation. I, I, uh. I struggle with it as do you, because some days I agree. Some days I'm like, no, you don't get it, but I want to be aware of it as a reality. And so yeah. there is an element of this that is struggle. But yeah, uh, that will come. But those might even be like, hey, where there's a struggle, where there's tension, let's flip the switch on that. Let's yeah. see that as, okay, where is there an opportunity for help? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of post-traumatic growth because Ooh, it, yeah. it doesn't only mean stress. It also yeah. creates, you know, tension creates growth and, and opportunity. So I really love mm -hmm. the way you say it. You're really, really deep and profound and, and insightful. I love it. Um, I have two more questions. No, the, the first one is, you know, I love how you've been talking about community and mentorship. Well, you didn't, but you said you have a mentor. So um, this one is a combined question. Do you believe that belonging to a mastermind group, having a mentor, mm -hmm. having a, a, a community of peer, um, you know, of peers that, that support you, how does that, create growth, inspiration, empowerment, if at all? Oh, I mean, and yes, uh, all, all these things, the answer is, is just yes. Uh, so a mas masterminds are, are can, you know, can be wonderful, are definitely wonderful in concept. Uh, mentorship, again, is another huge part of that, because we're talking about, you know, this person might have spent decades paving the way, and they want their ceiling to be your floor. Um, I, I love, love, love that. Uh, and so many of them are actually, they, they want to give it away. They see, they know the power, they see the significance and it's not even about money. It's about, again, that, that greater shared vision. Um, so I, I love all of those and we want to push stories on those and we want to partner with people who are helping make that happen um, at the foundation. And I'll also be quick to say a lot of people do get hung up and if, you know, so if there's someone right now who's listening or watching this, people get hung up on, you know, do I need to go pay for something? You, you can, and that can be a very viable solution. But okay. I would say, look for community at your coffee shop. Look for mentorship um, in the, the city park with friends. Uh, look, mm -hmm. look for business partnerships, um, you know, anywhere you go, because it's not, it's not as formal as people think. Yeah, uh, this is ultimately about people. And so we, we create those words, we create those structures to be helpful. So where the structure is helpful, where the tool is helpful, use it. And like where it is not, you know, uh, I, I, I'm a Kansas farm boy at heart. <laughs> and I will tell you that wheat goes great, grows great in Kansas. If yeah. I add structure, a lot of times wheat can grow really, really well. But I've also seen, you know, seed spill off the truck and grow very happily elsewhere. So I want people to be aware of like, th there's life. It's um, how do you find that balance of intentionality cultivation? If you are approaching it and wanting to make that happen, it is much more likely to come to you, but you often, you know, you have to either seek it out or to cultivate that. I love that. And, and I think that the stories are, are a form of mentorship because you can, you can mm. definitely see a pattern and like they say, success leaves clues and those clues can be found in those stories. Oh, I love and, that. 
Yeah, and I, I thank you. And I, my last question is, you know, how can everyone help you? Like, what what can people do to support the foundation, to support your your mission, and to to really be um, of help to this amazing movement that you've created? Oh man, dive, dive in. That's I, we're we're here for you. This is a <laughs> this is a communal exchange. So like for for us and helping us. If if you are somebody, what would help us more than anything? If you are somebody who is wondering how do I have that ownership, feel that creative significance in my life? How do I get out of this rut? How do I make this idea or dream happen? Um, we'd love for you to like come to the website. We have you know millionstories.com is this wonderful channel we've made with all sorts of stories of other people from every walk of life and at every stage of the financial or creative or business, um, you know, solution, situation, et cetera. And so those are great places to come. And what we love more than anything is just for people to be inspired and for people to be contribute. And man, if, uh, as they're, as they're successful, heck, you know, give us a ping, tell us your story. Um, that that's the heart behind that million stories channel that the foundation created is that we want this to be shared. There are a million stories, um, yeah. you know, download the game. We have this game called venture Valley. Uh, you can go online and find out it'll, it'll be coming out soon, but it allows you to play around and like, you know, kind of get some of the nuts and the bolts in like a fun, fun way. But we're after participation. We want to see people not just believe what we believe, but because of that belief, have a change in behavior. Um, so th that's what will help us is let's all do this thing together and make the world an awesome place. I love it so much. Yes. Yeah, so everybody that's watching, go to a million stories.com and follow and share and just I, I guarantee that you'll be inspired when you go there I'll get I guarantee that it, it'll I mean it made me cry gave me chills all kinds of stuff but it, but I think that the main thread is joy a mm. lot of joy to what's possible in this world and and to how people um, can turn you know it's like we're alchemists that we turn something into something else. So I, I really appreciate your time, Ryan. You're very just inspiring and, and remarkably insightful. And I'm really honored to have had this chat with you. Thank you so much, Elena. You are also an inspiration and so glad to be a part. Thank you.